Council Rock Primary School presents a Pajama Day Book Reading with Matt Tappan and Heather McElduff. My friends, I have a story called Mrs. Toggle's Zipper. And it is by Robin Pulver and it is illustrated by R.W. Alley. And the cool thing about this author this author lives in Pittsburgh, New York. When Mrs. Toggle's children arrived at school in the morning, they changed in the hall from their boots to their shoes. When the bell rang, they picked up their boots and book bags and marched along to their room. They stuffed their boots and their bags into their cubby holes and hung up their coats. Then they sat down at their desks. Good morning, Mrs. Toggle, the children said in their best morning voices. Good morning, class, said Mrs. Toggle in an unusually grumpy voice. Hmm. Then the children noticed that Mrs. Toggle was still wearing her coat, the big, puffy, fuchsia-colored one that she got for Christmas. Ah, oh, Mrs. Toggle, yelled Joey, you forgot to take off your coat. I didn't forget, said Mrs. Toggle uncomfortably. I can't take it off because the zipper is stuck. I'm afraid it's going to be a long, hot day. How'd the zipper get stuck, Nina asked. Mrs. Toggle fanned her face. How does any zipper get stuck? First, a tiny bit of cloth get caught, gets caught in it. Then you pull, and you keep pulling a little too hard, and before you know it, you are trapped in your coat like a hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> the children gathered around Mrs. Toggle's desk to see for themselves. Yep, said Joey. That zipper sure is stuck. The others nodded. What's worse, said Mrs. Toggle, the thingamajig is gone. The what, said the children? The thingamajig, that thing you pull the zipper up and down with mine is lost. Oh, groaned the children. They all thought happily about their own coats hanging on hooks with their zippers open and the thingamajigs still on them. <laughs> Maybe we can help, said Caroline. It's worth a try, said Mrs. Toggle. Mrs. Toggle braced her feet on the floor. She leaned forward in her chair and held out her arms. Some children grabbed one sleeve, some the other sleeve. Paul and Nina grabbed fistfuls of her collar. No, yelled Mrs. Toggle, and everybody pulled. And everybody landed with thuds and bumps in a heap on the floor. Mrs. Toggle's collar was as far up as her nose, but no further than that. Paul wanted to get busy learning his times table. Um, Mrs. Toggle, he said, let's go to the nurse's office. Maybe Mrs. Schott can help you. Mrs. Toggle and the children trudged down to the office of Mrs. Schott the school nurse. When Mrs. Schott saw Mrs. Toggle's hot red face, she reached for her thermometer and popped it into Mrs. Toggle's mouth. Mrs. Toggle shook her head. I don't have a temperature. <laughs> don't talk with a thermometer in your mouth, said Mrs. Schott sternly. I will telephone your mother. I don't live with my mother, mumbled Mrs. Toggle. Mouth Closed, ordered Mrs. Schott. Nina spoke up. Um, she's not sick, and she doesn't live with her mother because she's a grown-up. Mrs. Toggle is hot because she can't get her coat off. The zipper's stuck, and the thingamajig is lost. Then we must pull it off, said Mrs. Schott. Oh, we tried that, Paul said. This time, we will add a bandage, the nurse answered. Bandages make boo-boos better. But first, Mrs. Toggle, you must take that thermometer out of your mouth. Mrs. Schott stuck a bandage on the zipper where the thingamajig was supposed to be. Then she pulled, and the children pulled, and they all ended up with thuds, bumps, and bangs on the floor of Mrs. Schott's office. Mrs. Toggle, her collar was as far up as her nose, but no further than that. Mrs. Schott shook her head. I must call the principal. 
he'll know what to do with you. The principal, Mr. Stickler, left important matters on his desk to hurry to the nurse's office. Why would they name him Mr. Stickler? What do you think? He sticks to the, what do you think he, what's important to him? The rule, the rules are really important. Because as a principal, we have to make sure. So he sticks to the rules, so they say he's a stickler. Mr. Stickler frowned when he saw Mrs. Toggle. Mrs. Toggle, it's against school rules to wear your coat all day long. I'm sorry, said Mrs. Toggle, but I can't take my coat off. The zipper is stuck. Uh, tell him about the thingamajig, said Nina. The what? asked Mr. Stickler. You know, said Paul, the what's it? The doodad, said Caroline. The whatchamacallit, said Joey. My students are right, said Mrs. Toggle. The thingamajig is missing from my zipper. The principal frowned again. Mrs. Toggle, he said, in my job I have learned that if you want to get out of a tight spot, you must follow the rules. Pay attention, children, he said. Make two straight lines. One line will pull one on the right arm. The other line will pull on the left arm. Mrs. Shutt, you are responsible for the collar. I shall pull on Mrs. Toggle's feet. Um, we've tried that, Joey said. Pulling doesn't work, Nina agreed. Did you make straight lines, asked Mr. Stickler. That's the rule. Stay in straight lines. Now get ready. Get set. Pull! The children and Mrs. Shutt pulled in one direction. Mr. Stickler pulled in the other direction. Mrs. Toggle tried to make herself small and wriggly. But with thuds, bumps, bangs, and a kerplop, they all ended up on the floor once more. Mrs. Toggle's collar was as far up as her nose, but no further than that. Mr. Stickler said, Enough of this! We don't want holes in the school's floor just because of Mrs. Toggler's zipper. I'm calling the custodian. I'm afraid he'll have to cut this coat off. <gasps> no! cried the children and Mrs. Toggle. Never! The custodian, Mr. Abel, arrived wearing his big work apron. Tools bulged out of every pocket. He looked at Mrs. Toggle in her coat. <gasps> Is the building too cold for you, Mrs. Toggle? He said kindly. Maybe the thermostat's off. I'll go check it. Wait, said Mr. Stickler. Uh, you see, said Caroline, Mrs. Toggle can't get her coat off because her zipper's stuck. Yes, the principal said, and there's a problem with the thingamajig. Mr. Abel listened carefully. Hmm, he said, I can see that the pull tab is gone. The what? This is, said the children and Mrs. Toggle and the nurse and the principal all together. I said the pull tab is gone. Don't worry, I've seen worse. Mr. Abel pulled a pair of needle nose pliers out of his huge apron pocket. He used the pliers to loosen the grip of the zipper's metal teeth on the shiny fuchsia colored lining of Mrs. Toggle's coat. Gently with his large fingers, Mr. Abel eased the lining away from the teeth. Then he slid the zipper down down, down, it opened completely. Mr. Abel helped Mrs. Toggle off with her coat. A happy smile spread over Mrs. Toggle's face. Mrs. Schott and Mr. Stickler and the children cheered. You should get a new pull tab for that zipper before you zip it up again, said the custodian. Oh, I surely will, said Mr. Mr. Abel, said Mrs. Toggle. I am forever grateful to you. The principal went back to his very important matters. Mrs. Schott rushed off to check a child for chicken pox. Mrs. Toggle and the children traipsed back to their room to tackle the times tables. Mr. Abel pulled a small pad from his huge apron pocket and wrote himself a reminder. Remember to look up thingamajig in the dictionary. <laughs> and that is the end. Girls, how is everyone today? Good. Well, in case you don't remember, I'm Mrs. Mackleduff, and I'm going to read a story to you, okay? This is called Snow Globe Family, but in this book, it's about a family that lives in a snow globe. 
In a big house, high on a hill, lives a family. A mama, a papa, a boy, a girl, and a baby. On the mantel, in the parlor, sits a snow globe. It has been there such a long time, nobody notices it anymore. Nobody except baby. Who would like more tea or crumb cake? The mama asks. Inside the snow globe lives another family, a very little family. A mama, a papa, a boy, a girl, and a little baby. They are having dessert too, only their cups are so small, each one holds no more than half a drop of tea. Who would like another crumb of crumb cake? The little mama asks. In the snow globe, sparkly snow covers the ground all year round. The little family doesn't mind. They love snow. They build snowmen as big as lumps of sugar. They skate on a pond as shiny as a silver coin. They throw snowballs, make snow angels, and tramp through the snow, leaving footprints smaller than the sprinkles on an ice cream cone. If only someone in the big family would shake the snow globe really hard and make a hill of snow. Then the little family could go sledding. Sometimes the little family shouts, Hello out there! Look at us! But the big papa is reading aloud a story. Nobody notices them. Nobody except baby. The little papa is reading a story too. When he's done, the children say, tell us about the big snowstorms from long ago. Please, papa. There used to be snowstorms all the time. Big ones, their papa begins. The house rattled and shook. Dishes flew from the cupboards. Furniture slid across the floor. Once I got thrown out of the bathtub. Right? Those were the days. Now, there's only a gentle flurry once a week when the parlor maid dusts the mantle. Inside the snow globe, nobody except the little baby notices. A flurry? Who cares? What the family wants is a great big snowstorm, a blizzard. That's what the children in the big house are hoping for too, a blizzard. And one evening, snow starts to fall and doesn't stop. It's a perfect night for sledding. Off they go, leaving baby behind. It's your bedtime. The snow will still be here tomorrow, the mama says, and goes upstairs to run baby's bath. But baby wants snow now. Baby pushes her papa's footstool over to the mantel. She piles books and pillows on top, then up she climbs. Who does she see inside the snow globe? The little family. She sees the little baby. What does the little baby see? The giant. Two enormous eyes. Ah. Baby grabs the snow globe. Oops! The books and pillows slip from under her. She lands on the pillows and giggles. She shakes the snow globe. She shakes it some more. Inside the snow globe, the little family hangs on for dear life. This is some storm, says Papa. Yahoo, says Mama. Oh my! <laughs> In the big house, baby hears her Mama calling. Come baby, we'll go sledding too. The snow is too wonderful to miss. Inside the snow globe, the little family runs outside. There is a perfect hill for sledding. Whee! Oh. Whee! It is late now. In the big house, the mama, the papa, and the children are upstairs.
fast asleep. The snow globe is up on the mantle again. The little family is fast asleep too. Everyone, big and little, is dreaming about the next big snowstorm. Who knows? It might come very soon. Good job, boys and girls. Thank you. You've been watching a Pajama Day book reading from Council Rock Primary School with Matt Tatter and Heather McElduff.